The fall season is in full throttle and you may or may not still be wondering whether it's worth to pick up any of the shows that got a second season this time around. Let me help you there. My name is Christine, this is Hamstarko and today we are taking a closer look at K. up in the middle of an ambush. We find out that in this version of Tokyo, people exist with uber-human powers. The strongest of those are called the Seven Kings, each king representing a different color. Because of their abilities they are involved in a country's security, its economy or simply run the streets. Everything gets out of balance when someone starts to kill the kings and their clansmen. Watching K has been a weird experience that's as fascinating as it is frustrating. It had parts I really really enjoyed, and as far as endings go, K has a good one. It's just that a good end should hammer in everything that we've learned so far. That didn't happen, as everything that should have led up to this end didn't quite fit. Since the only problem I have with K is the story itself, I have to go a bit more into detail than I usually would. I feel like this is necessary to make my point clear because otherwise my review will be just as messy as the show. Still, no spoilers. The first two episodes are a great entry into a high story with all the underground talk and gang stuff going on. A bit of information is revealed but not too much to keep you interested. The last couple of episodes are a great end to a story about how great power comes with great responsibility or even ethics and science. At the beginning it hints in that direction as it's explained that the kings have a Damocles sword placed above their heads, which is such a great metaphor. You go story, you go! We find out that the king's powers, while usually used to keep the world in balance, can backfire, become completely unstable based on the user's psyche, and once Damocles' sword falls down, destroy entire districts. It's the type of story that never gets old and never loses relevance. Combine it with interesting characters and engaging personal conflicts, leave the production budget where it is, and we have ourselves a great show. Or go down a high story path and play around with urban myth. Of course, a combination of those two ideas would work perfectly as well or don't do anything like this, I don't care. But K has this weird middle part that introduces more and more ideas for a 13 episode long show without ever going all the way with any of them. And so we switch from Shiro running for his life to him, pretty samurai boy and cat girl doing high school stuff, over traditional tea ceremonies, back to fights between the red and blue king's clansmen. Further down the road we find out about some body snatcher stuff going on, similar to the Saika or Slasher arc in Dorarara. The fact that Shiro is supposed to have killed several people and looks more and more guilty the more he tries to prove his innocence is never forgotten. Everyone just tends to get a little bit sidetracked. I would like to emphasize that none of the introduced ideas in itself are entirely bad. The consequences the series showed for the character who was possessing all those people were really interesting and high schools, as of life comedies, you either dig them or you don't. It's not surprising that K is the way it is, as it's a franchise which seven authors came together with the goal to create something everyone and their cat would enjoy, hence misunderstood that most story doesn't equate to best story. K feels so off because nothing in it has a real purpose other than to display how cool it is. Therefore it feels insincere, as its coolness doesn't derive from our perception of a unique character, setting or idea. This is important. Acting cool doesn't make you cool. Think of it a little bit like your parents adapting words or phrases those youngsters use nowadays. It feels awkward. Kate tries to cheat us into thinking it is cool by using too much of everything. Rotating cameras and lens flares, edgy characters and put on behavior very detailed backgrounds and a different set of lights for every set piece. That kind of coolness kills empathy which is the most important thing when creating a story and especially when introducing such a huge cast. Due to its vast size we barely have time to get to know them. Some characters get a little bit of background but since the show is already so cramped that information is put aside and forgotten. As a result none of them stand out, neither do the conversation or personal conflicts if they happen to have one. The female characters are all useless but at least they look good in uniforms or make cat sounds. Yet K is super popular and a financial success, with a second season that scores the top 10 in the TV ratings, various light novels on the market and a manga adaptation announced, as it does give people what they want. Fun and almost too fast paced action scenes, a world with a crisp look, characters that don't take shit from anyone and they are all so 
pretty. I wish my hair was as soft and my lashes as long. The soundtrack doesn't even try to make you feel anything, but the combination of beats and classical instruments never gets old and is quite pleasant to listen to. Speaking of which, the voice cast is ridiculous. It's basically an entire generation of apt and popular voice actors, and these are just the main characters. Bouncy book physics and panty shots are the cherry on top of this franchise that offers something for everyone. It's heartless entertainment that at least on the surface looks smart, but once you try to look behind all the superficialities, there isn't much left. So there's one and only one condition under which I would recommend to check out K Project. You just came out of something that blew your mind. Let's say Shirobako. And now you're left with this emptiness that always creeps up on you after you've seen something sincerely good. All you want now is some kind of background noise. Then go and watch the first season of K, which is available in sub and dub on Netflix. At this point I would say don't bother with the movie, don't bother with the second season. Any questions you might still have at the end of season 1 are not going to be answered, as it continues to throw in more stuff and more characters. Return of Kings does everything that has been slightly annoying about the first season and makes it worse. And I'll admit that I probably wouldn't be so hard on it, hadn't it triggered me so hard before it even started. Boot physics and upskirt shots have been a part of the first season as well. Now they are even pro executed and pro material like that is just unnecessary in 2015. Besides that, the first episode was a clusterfuck of an action scene. Everything was flashy, everything was moving, the camera was constantly rotating, zooming in and out. Again, most action isn't best action. K could have easily been a really good franchise had it stuck to less is more. If you're looking for an entertaining cast and all the action scenes you can imagine, I will point you towards the obvious choice at the moment. One Punch Man, which is available on Daisuke.net for free. If you're looking for something with a bit more substance, I'll advise to check out Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works and Fate Zero, mandatorily in that order. Both are available on Crunchyroll. I'll be back with something a bit more positive next time, I hope. I don't like writing negative reviews. I like liking things. If you like liking things too, then don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.